Hi there. Welcome to Kali and the Gardener. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite things to grow in the garden and that is potatoes. And I have been experimenting and playing with them for many years now. And it first started in our other house where I grew them in grow bags and it was like having Easter each time we turned over a bag and you got out a blue or a red potato. And we had great success with that. So definitely we'll try and put some episodes up. I'll try and grow some of these in grow bags. So you can see you don't need a lot of space or really soft soil to grow them in. But the majority of the potatoes I grow now on this property are in the ground. And that's really where you're going to find the largest yields and the best success, especially because you can grow them companion style with beans and peas that add nitrogen into the soil. The thing to remember about potatoes is they are huge consumers of nutrient in the soil. They like their soil to be rich and fertilized. And when you pick them out, they tend to leave it depleted. So I tend to go with early developing potatoes. And the reason for that is they'll be ready in about late June, July to start being harvested. And as I'm harvesting each plant to eat and consume right away or to save for a few weeks, I'm then planting even more green beans or pole beans in that soil to enrich it back for next year. The other thing to remember about potatoes is they are susceptible to a fungus called blight. And that fungus can sit in the soil for quite a while after you have harvested those leaves. So I like to harvest my potatoes before the leaves start showing that sign of fungus illness. Because with my space, even though I have a lot, I don't really have the opportunity to crop rotate. So I have to be mindful each season as I'm growing these plants to make sure that I'm growing them in as disease-free a manner as possible. Today, we're not planting potatoes. We're talking about getting them ready to go in the ground. And the reason why we're not planting them today is because we're still in our rainy season in central Washington. Also, we have a few days of frost, and this really isn't the time to put something that's filled with quite a bit of water in the ground because it is prone to rot or it can really diminish in a freezing situation. So the best way to start the growth period is to chit your potatoes. And it's not something you have to do. Chitting your potatoes means kind of getting them ready. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here is what chitting looks like. And really, it's a passive process. It's not one that requires much work from you. It's when the potato, the eyes that are developing, start to develop little purple shoots. You can see here. And we want this development. This is where the leaves are going to start and the stems to develop from these potatoes. We don't want them to be long and stringy because when we're planting it, it means it may break. We kind of want them to be stubby like this and have kind of a purplish color. And we just want a few. You can see there'll be quite a few different stems that develop and we could cut those out now, but I usually let them go because sometimes there's damage and you lose one or two while you're burying them down deep. So I like to see what develops and then as we get to that burial stage, we can sort of thin things out. But I wanted to show you the potatoes I got, where I ordered them from, so let's go through it. Okay, I wanted to just show you the bird's eye view of the potatoes that I'm going to be growing this year in my garden. And I order them mainly from Stark Brothers. They contract through a farm called Wood Prairie Family Farm out of Maine. And then I have one little package over here that's from Gurney's. And they just happen to have a type of potato, a mountain rose potato that just looks so pretty online that I had to give it a try as well. But I have a huge variety of potatoes here that are early growth potatoes. So they're going to develop the fastest. They're going to be ready probably about June, July. We're going to be pulling them out of the ground. They won't last as long in your cupboard, but they give you that really early harvest so that you can turn that bed over. You can grow other things in it and enjoy them. We also have a really short season. So I don't have a lot of time in zone seven to leave potatoes in the ground. There certainly are potato farmers that are doing that, but 
with the size property that I have, I just want something quick, rewarding, and then turn it over, grow something else. I also don't want to leave them in the ground in the fall where they may be susceptible to that blight we were talking about earlier. So by harvesting them in the hot part of the summer, it's dry and we really reduce the risk of that fungus infection. So let's start opening these bags and I'll show you kind of what each one looks like. All right, I have unpacked Gurney's Mountain Rose. You can see they look lovely. They're starting to chit. They're starting to produce out of those eyes, those new shoots. They're purple and we like that. They're short. They're not super long. And honestly, I didn't do anything to create that except to keep it in my garage that's about 50 to 40 degrees. There's often some light in my garage coming in because it's open. We're doing all sorts of things throughout the day. So it was a very passive process, but this is exactly what we're looking for. Now, unfortunately, at the bottom of the bag, there were some sort of raisiny potatoes that got a little moldy. And so those will not go in the ground. They'll go in the compost um, because they just don't look healthy and I'm not going to waste that space on them. And sometimes you just got to let things go. I don't blame this on the company at all. This was probably me leaving it too long without spreading them out. And so that's something else we want to talk about. When I am now getting them sort of hardened off and ready, I'm going to dry them out a little bit and leave them on this cookie sheet. So even though they already have that wrinkly look to them, they're going to sit for a few more days, probably about two weeks with lots of air between them so that they can dehydrate a little bit more while I'm waiting for the weather to change outside. When we move over here, you can see they were growing in my garage and they just decided to grow towards light and they got a little carried away and the light was just not as close to them as we ideally wanted. And so we have these really long sort of leggy shoots here. And this isn't ideal for us because when we're burying them down deep, this is vulnerable to breakage. And so the issue here can be, you know, do we let this continue to grow as this is, or do we break it off and sort of encourage the plant to focus on other chits that are a little bit shorter and more ideal? And that's really up to you. Chitting is not something you have to allow happen. It just gives you the head start. These aren't excessive, and I'm not going to allow the plant to really grow for too, too long. Um, so I'm kind of going to let it be probably for most of them. I think just naturally the longer leggier ones are going to break off in the process of being moved around and sort of rotated through. If they look damaged, however, I am going to remove this because it is prone to disease. You can see it looks like it's been broken off at the top there. And there are a few like that. So I will just break those off. Not a big deal. I'll let those sort of wound areas dry out. In fact, we'll do it right now. You can see that's where I just broke that off. That's going to dry out while we're letting them sit on the cookie sheets for a couple of extra days. But that potato now is going to make its investment into the healthier eyes that you can see that are developing right there. So we'll go through that process again. This is another area you can see where a chip maybe this growth is not working out the way we want. And so I'm just going to snap it off. There's sort of the wound of the eye. Some people choose to have less eyes in their potatoes because they feel that it gives them a greater number of larger potatoes. And some people leave more stems because they feel like they'd rather have smaller potatoes, but more of them. So there's all sorts of theories on things. And you can definitely experiment with some potatoes. It's also important to draw attention that I purchase my potatoes from a farm that sells seed potatoes. And we haven't even gotten them all unpacked yet. But the reason for that is grocery store potatoes might sprout. But the issue is they're often 
you know, irradiated or have chemical processes sprayed on them that prevent them from fully sprouting. And so you may be disappointed when you get it in the ground to see that it never fully matures or develops or you're introducing disease into your garden. And so by ordering these seeds, seed potatoes specifically, you are ordering from a farm that specifically grows potatoes that are disease free at the time of shipment to put in your garden and you're getting a huge variety compared to what you could buy just in the grocery store. So it's super easy to just go on those two websites. There's so many websites that you can order from. I'll list a few more on my links below that I've experimented with, but Stark Brothers, specifically Wood Prairie Family Farm is awesome with the quality of the potatoes that they have to offer you. So let's keep on packing. This potato here has several eyes and it's pretty nice, but it's really large. And I'd like to get another potato out of this. So we're gonna end up cutting it probably like this so that I can get two more potato plants as opposed to one. And it's so nice to do on a cookie sheet because it's really easy to cut in that area. So you can see now I have this eye here and this eye here on this plant. And it's still pretty large and it's going to have a lot of energy, but it's really moist here right now. And so we want it to dry out so it doesn't cause rot when we put it in the ground. So it'll kind of scab over and become drier in this zone. So we'll leave this face up or at least open and exposed to the air with nothing kind of close to it. And this was the other half. You can see there's plenty of eyes here. We could even cut it again. I have to remind myself though, and you as well, that the only place a potato plant is going to grow from is where an eye is. So say we cut this area here where there's no eyes. If I put that in the ground, nothing is going to develop from that potato. So you want to make sure with every cut you do, don't go crazy, that there are at least two or three eyes in that part of the potato. Otherwise, you're gonna be disappointed you won't have any growth. Here's another one. It's got a few different eyes really nicely developing. I'm gonna kind of cut it down in a diagonal. You can see it's cut open. Here's a really nice eye area there. Sort of leave it exposed. Another nice eye area here. Not too much. There's one more here, so I think we should be great. I'm not going to divide it again. And a potato like this, it's smaller, so I'm not going to cut it because it really, I don't think, would have enough energy to do everything it needed and multiply in the same way. All right, this is the final beauty shot. You can see each of the potatoes is spread out, has lots of air for circulation to sort of continue its dehydration process and scabbing over those cut areas. We are going to leave them in the garage where it's about 40 to 50 degrees and I'll leave them by a light source, probably a really nice window. If I don't think they're getting enough light and things look leggy, I'm going to add some grow lights to them. But really, we're just going to have to watch over them passively for about the next two weeks. I think that's when the weather is going to break and change. So please remember to hit subscribe, like, and leave your comments. I'll be posting future videos on the process of growing and harvesting these potatoes, as well as enjoying eating them with different recipes. Thanks.